Uh, yes, you can go ahead. You can ask. Ma'am, uh, when we baptize in the Holy Spirit, uh, we are speaking the same tongues. Like when we baptize in the Holy Spirit, we are speaking tongues, right? Again, in the another time, when you are, when we receive the Holy Spirit, speaking the same tongues. Why is that, ma'am? Yeah. So, um, getting of new words, or as people call it, new language, renewal of uh, the language, it it can happen over time. Uh, but why do we speak the same language? I think I told last time, even when we are using our normal language, we repeat a lot of words. So it may seem like we are not speaking anything new, but don't go by that. Uh, anyway, we can't understand what we are talking. God understands. No. So it's fine. Let him understand. Yeah? Ma yes. yes Ma in a church gathering, like believers gathering, mm -hmm. um, when someone speaks in tongue, Paul says, if someone speaks in tongue, one should explain it, right. what it is. If no one is there to explain, let him not speak in tongue. Yeah. Because if some un unbelievers came inside, they, said they will think that these yeah. people are doing something, unwanted things like that. Right, right. So it, it actually happened. Mm. So uh, on the other hand, uh, Paul says that uh, do, uh, um, you know, uh, eager eager for spiritual gifts which are able to build the church mm. speaking in tongues will build us mm. it build individual in spiritual growth but uh, try to go try to seek for the uh, spiritual gifts which are able to build the church mm -hmm. so what would you say for this uh, if no people yeah. is there to explain what he is speaking in tongues does we yes. yeah i think i got your question um, uh, Gerald, right? Gerald. So, uh, Gerald, the first part of your question is, if there is an unbeliever uh, and we are all speaking in tongues, right? he might not understand it, first of all, and he might think uh, that something wrong is happening. Okay, so how do we deal with it? See, in Paul's instruction there, he says, a message in tongues requires an interpreter. So when we are in a circle like this, we are all believers. And uh, when we have a supernatural, uh, when people are praying in the spirit, we understand what's going on. There is, nobody is giving a message in tongues. So it's okay to pray in tongues. There's nothing wrong with it. In a believing gathering, if we all pray in tongues, there is no unbeliever. But if there is a message in tongues, so most of our praying in tongues is of the category of personal prayer language. Tongues has some categories. This is personal prayer language. Second category is uh, tongues as a message. The instruction Paul is giving is for tongues as a message. Got it? So we should not stop people from praying in tongues. In a believing circle, it's okay if we pray in tongues. But just be sensitive. Like if it's a church service or a special meeting where we are expecting unbelievers to come, maybe in our pre-service pre prayer time, you pray in tongues. Finish it off. But in the prayer service, in the main service, try to speak in tongues only if it's a message. Otherwise, it may not help. So that is answering your first question. Second one, you said, Paul says, desire the best gifts. That's the point, right? Desire the best gifts. And in 1 Corinthians 14, he explains um, a comparison between tongues and prophecy. And he says, if you want to communicate to an unbeliever, what is the best gift? Prophecy. In that context, he says, prophecy is better than tongues. But that should not be taken to say that tongues is not a good gift or a best gift. That's also a best gift. How? Go back to the first verse. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. All spiritual gifts. Desire all spiritual gifts. 
but in the context of ministering to an unbeliever prophecy is helpful so that's why he says especially that you may prophesy so you have to look at the context without knowing that context we can't say that all other gifts are better because they build the church and tongues is building the individual person so it's not good there's nothing like that yeah okay i think we have addressed quite a few questions regarding tongues now let's come to the next chapter yeah which is about developing your personal prayer life okay yeah um so here we have some practical instructions on how to develop a strong personal prayer life and these are based on mainly the life of jesus but also we can look at godly men and women from scripture so i'm going to go over this quite quickly our personal prayer life consists of time in prayer by ourselves and time in prayer corporately so when we say corporate prayer it means when we are praying with other people praying in a group praying in a life group praying in the church praying in a prayer meeting all that is corporate prayer life but there are two aspects corporate prayer life and personal prayer life most of the time where we struggle is sometimes we can pray in front of people but personal prayer life we are struggling we are not able to develop it and make it consistent both need to be uh, be thriving that's the point we need both so our prayer life is made up of both personal as well as corporate prayer life now when it comes to developing our prayer life we need self control okay or in other words we need discipline discipline okay that word which most of us don't like <laughs> it's tough discipline in any area is difficult but that is applicable even when it comes to our prayer life in first corinthians 9 and verse 25 you know paul teaches us how to march forward for the heavenly prize the heavenly reward and he says that one must be self restrained or one must be able to exercise self discipline self control that is when we can actually complete what god has called us to do you know in a in an olympic race we have discussed about this people train very hard because we need to concentrate we need to develop our body um, in in such a way that it does what it's supposed to do in order to win the prize in the same way when it comes to our personal prayer life we need discipline so self restraint or self uh, or exercising self restraint is exercising discipline so why are we going on saying we need discipline as far as prayer life is concerned see it takes discipline to allot a time and pray at that time given the lifestyles that we have today uh, many of us may find it difficult to actually do it but it is going to take discipline isn't it if we want to keep it consistent let's consider for a moment the life of daniel daniel in the bible what does his prayer life look like can somebody read daniel chapter 6 verse 10 it's there in the notes Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his god as was his custom since since early days Okay wonderful So Daniel he is in a difficult situation 
there is a judgment that's going to be passed on him because he's not ready to do um, he's not ready to offer his worship to anyone but god so he's in trouble right now he's in trouble right now and it says when when daniel knew that the writing was signed there's a judgment against him it's coming what would we do in a situation like this pack our bags right ready to leave run away escape in such a way that no trace nobody should be able to find us what is daniel doing what is he doing he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his god look at this last part this is the important part as was his custom since early days so daniel even in a difficult situation is going back home and continuing his prayer we all say right daniel prayed three times daniel prayed during those three times when the jews pray he was committed devoted believer in god he is doing his normal practice as a jew but also it says as was his custom since early days what does that tell us it was a practice it was a discipline it was a habit it was a lifestyle this is how daniel was for many days early days could refer to the times when he was young if you would go to daniel's house and check on him three day three times a day he would still be praying nothing different it's a schedule okay it's his timetable every day the man has discipline and he says this is what i've always done this is what i will continue to do three times i'm praying and as per the jews do you know towards jerusalem look towards jerusalem and he is praying so what a wonderful example of a person with a consistent prayer life for many years he prayed like this one more thing okay about daniel now he is in babylon and he is working for um nebuchadnezzar the king do you think daniel had a lot of responsibility a lot because he is in a key position he is reporting to the king himself i'm sure the king would have asked him where where is this task i told you to do this daniel have you done this have you done this and we read that there was a spirit of excellence in daniel that means he was doing excellent work on his job but at the same time it says as was his custom from early days hard working excellent very prayerful so can we be all of this at the same time we can if we talk about daniel in today's language we may say you know he is some um uh you know some uh, official in in some legislative council legislative assembly something like that or we might say he's the ceo he's a big guy he has lots of influence but the busyness of his work is not stopping him from his prayer schedule so today our generation we say we don't have time we don't have time pastor we don't have time you know to your teachers or 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 anyone else your parents if they say oh pray pray and go i don't have time how come daniel had time he's overseeing you know large peoples people groups reporting directly to the king busy man very busy but still he was consistent in his prayer life so it's very challenging for us to look at daniel and say if he can do it we can do it okay so that's the lesson we learn from daniel's life um and as we look at ourselves today there one is we say we don't have time and sometimes we say um i will pray when the holy spirit will lead me 
when is holy spirit going to lead we don't know we are waiting 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 till the holy spirit leads then only we are going to pray but you see we we know already in the word of god that god wants us to pray why should we wait for a special leading of the holy spirit for us to pray so these are all common excuses that people make sometimes people say um i pray throughout the day any time anywhere i pray is it good or bad yeah okay fair we are praying talking to god at all times but you see there is something about sitting with god for a committed amount of time and praying because there are certain things that god can do in our spirit when we sit for that whatever 45 minutes 1 hour more than 1 hour which he may not be able to do if i'm saying throughout the day i'm praying as i'm walking i'm praying as i'm talking i'm praying we may miss out on encountering god in a special way in those moments that we have committed okay so these are all excuses that people make but you see there are disadvantages if we don't commit time for prayer and there are people who say what is there in praying what are we going to achieve we should work working is more important than praying have you heard that yeah people say don't waste your time prayer don't don't waste your time but we saw daniel prayed jesus prayed so is prayer a waste of time of course not it's a very powerful thing to do so prayer is not a waste of time and somewhere the enemy will try to tell us that don't just you work hard that's enough god will bless you you don't have to pray but it's a lie we have to work hard also but we also have to pray so this is the example from the life of daniel we've already seen about jesus jesus woke up early in the morning to spend time with the father in prayer that is his example to us when the disciples asked him jesus teach us how to pray he taught us okay pray like this our father in heaven he is our best example so he gave us the structure or the pattern for prayer jesus jesus made extra time for prayer remember we said he left the crowds he went into the mountain he went into the wilderness he is spending more time whole night he is praying something important about prayer extended times of prayer and today we want to encourage all of us develop personal prayer life not corporate corporate is easy stand in front of people pray half an hour people will say oh how nicely you prayed okay uh, and that gives us a boost like wow everyone likes how i pray that's not what we are talking about personal prayer life you remember jesus said go shut the door when you pray in secret who sees your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly that is what personal prayer life is all about how do we develop this personal prayer life so some very practical tips uh, or guidelines now we don't have to follow them exactly like this it's not rigid but it will surely help us so what are these guidelines first one maintain a set time and a place to pray on normal days it's always helpful when we set aside a time and a place otherwise what happens life has so many demands and before you know it it'll just suck the time out gone time is gone you know we are cooking we are cleaning we are doing this we are doing that somebody wants us to come to the hospital time is gone but if we allocate time for something which is important to us we will do it so that's why we are saying maintain a set time so we can pick a particular time right different people are different some prefer late in the evening when every all the work is done some prefer early morning so it's up to you but we uh, like even for me it's early mornings 
when your mind is fresh you can read the word you can spend time in the word set aside time and a place okay i I've, i've also had t- a tough time developing my prayer life okay uh, and um, it could still be better but i remember you know trying to pray sitting on the bed how many of us know that doesn't work right one minute you're praying second minute you're seeing dreams and visions because you've fallen back into sleep okay it doesn't work it doesn't work so then i realized maybe a better thing to do is to get off uh refresh yourself uh if you want to get a cup of tea or something like that that's also fine find a spot maybe a chair or you go back to your table somewhere where you are uh, awake where you are alert so that is the everyday spot you go there sit there and you do your praying so set place set time for prayer and that will be very helpful in the beginning it will be challenging and all the campus residents know already but slowly you get used to it you discipline yourself for it so that is one second we can follow a format so what is the format the lord's prayer that can help uh where few things you praise god as soon as you start so if you are going to pray for one hour write down first 5 minutes what i am going to do second 10 minutes what i am going to do at least your mind is focused otherwise if you leave it open like that a uh, wandering mind that might happen so praising god thanksgiving then confession right we come to god we confess if there is any sin we ask god forgive me lord fill me with your holy spirit spend time doing that then we can also say god give me a right heart attitude the way david prayed uh, create in me a clean heart o god so sometime just coming before god and saying make me o god right before you so you spend some time doing that following that you can um, we could you know take time to pray for other things so just list out you know, maybe we are listing out some prayer requests uh we're listing out uh, prayer for healing and different things like that so follow any pattern that you have you feel led by the holy spirit now does this mean that you you should not pray without a pattern what if one day you're just praying like there's no pattern it's fine the pattern is only to help us and to guide us so some days you just want to pray uh being led by the spirit that's also all right so have a pattern and um list out you know various things i already said pray for people pray for healing pray for the church pray for um uh, the city pray for personal needs and you know continue to cover all the points that you want to pray about now after doing all this we can set aside a little bit of time to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit so what we discussed just now so in our 40 minutes or let's say 1 hour we are praying for 1 hour uh, we could set aside 20 minutes only praying in the holy spirit tongues so that also helps because that's what god or jesus um or the word of god says pray without ceasing praying in tongues means praying without ceasing so we can pray in tongues and apart from this what we can do is we can set aside certain days or certain seasons for prayer like i remember uh, back when i was uh, you know on a full time job not ministry full time job it was hard to get time off leaves uh, to to just spend time extra time in god's presence so uh, i had allocated weekends like maybe saturdays whatever time you get you just keep it for god you just keep it for prayer keep it for reading the word because it's special it's extra so there are half day of prayer or let's say a full day of prayer once in two weeks you take one friday you just pray or something like that set aside an extra time special time for us to spend with the lord hear from him and pour out our hearts before him we can also have special seasons so let's say when uh, we have holidays uh, we have two month break 
we can set aside time and say three days i'm going to fast and pray five days i'm going to fast and pray seven days 21 days whatever choose as per the holy spirit is guiding us but these are seasons we set that entire slot for the lord prayer fasting reading the word seeking the lord so in this way what are we doing not only are we spending time every day but we are also doing little extra in order to receive from the lord so look at your own calendar and you periods of time like this and when we do all of this obviously we are going to make our relationship with god stronger because this is what intimacy with god means right spending a lot of time with god spending a lot of time in prayer spending a lot of time in his word then secondly you know jesus taught us to pray to overcome temptation pray so that you will not be tempted so if you and i want to overcome temptation we need a strong prayer life when we have a strong prayer life it's easier to overcome temptation so that's another advantage one is intimacy with god second is overcoming temptation what is the other advantage it helps our will to become god's will so we are spending so much time with god in his word that we are very surrendered we are very submitted to god so it's quite easy for us to know what god wants we will not struggle to find the will of god regarding various matters so we'll know the will of god that's another advantage when we spend time in prayer it renews us spiritually strengthens the inner man makes us sensitive in the inner man and also gives us creativity creativity why creativity comes from whom comes from god new ideas come from whom god so usually it happens when we pray regarding something maybe a problem we say lord this is a thing i don't know how to solve it after we finish praying we get new ideas why can't we do like this why can't we do like that where did it come from god will put new ideas creativity fresh thoughts solutions to problems into our hearts and we will be able to navigate through life's challenges and problems so that's another advantage of spending time in prayer it will open up the door for holy spirit to work in us so the more time you know we go and sit you know sometimes in my prayer time uh i may not even have the words sometimes i just sit i say lord i'm just soaking in your presence 10 minutes 15 minutes i'm just sitting there and say holy spirit work in me work in me maybe i'm saying only a few things but waiting on the lord waiting in his presence okay and saying holy spirit i'm opening the door for you to work in my heart work in my life god work in this area of my life holy spirit begins to work and we see some new opportunities come there are um, what we thought it will not work out it's working out some doors are being open some doors are being shut there is deliverance there is healing why holy spirit is working Okay? so the holy spirit activity in our lives will increase if we take time in prayer and the final one as far as what we have in the notes is concerned is prayer is a great de-stressor if you and i are very stressed if we become anxious confused don't know what to do spend time in prayer because when whenever we go to god we cast our cares on the lord all our burdens are lifted off so when we come out of prayer we are calm we are still we are at least able to think okay what should i do right so the stress that we carry is gone when we develop a strong prayer life so this is another major advantage you want to live a stress free life meet with god spend time with god 
it will help you be a lot calmer and make better decisions all right so let me quickly look at um, the chat section here if there are any questions online students any questions or thoughts at this point please feel free to unmute and ask even those who are here anything about setting aside time and praying any practical issues doubts excuse me ma'am and this come yes sir uh, anyati how can you overcome a wandering mind during the time of prayer however okay. sometimes you struggle and when you keep quiet a moment of silence certain things may chip in how can you overcome that yeah sure uh, anyati so it's a matter of uh, developing discipline is what we will say and in order to develop that discipline we will have to tell ourselves that no matter what we are going to sit with god for that period of time okay so as you're doing it slowly you will be able to focus now if you want more help uh, that you can train your mind uh, and uh, you know you can do this by reading the word and focusing on the word so you're developing a stronger focus and that way that is brought into your prayer time as well and you're able to concentrate better that is one second is you can keep a small note of paper next to you if a thought comes which is important just quickly write it down and tell yourself i'll revisit this later right now i'm praying i look at this later so that's a way of directing yourself to focus again so that also may help third one is wandering can happen because of spiritual reasons satan and his demons can cause the wandering of mind so what we can also do is you can take authority in the name of jesus every distracting spirit every um you know every spirit that is weakening my concentration i bind you in the name of jesus i reject you in the name of jesus i rebuke you in the name of jesus so you have to do some spiritual warfare okay so as you do that you'll see that these things are leaving and you're improving focus during prayer i hope that helps you yes yeah sure thank you any other questions practical uh, yes i'm uh, like you said that you can set a prayer time like uh, 10 minutes of personal prayer Yeah. 15 minutes of scripture yes. and 20 like 20 minutes of studying about that scripture so how can we make that time table that it will become very effectful mm -hmm. okay how do we make that time table see each of us we know our own capacity so based on that i think you have to come up with always while setting goals we say be realistic how much can you achieve now if you're a beginner and you feel that you will not be able to do so much you can set aside maybe 15 minutes for reading the word of god and 15 minutes for prayer and in that 15 minutes keep it simple you know 5 uh, minutes you're praying worshiping the lord 5 minutes you're praying for uh, all your needs 5 uh, minutes maybe you're sitting and hearing from the lord something like that so as you're doing this half an hour half an hour this week next week make it more make it 45 minutes so like that as you reach small milestones push it to the next one and push it to the next one does that help so if i'm like doing for 20 minutes yeah and i'm reading for 10 minutes reading and praying for 10 minutes mm. and uh, so it will be effectful see ideally or, or 45 minutes or 1 hour will be effectful I would suggest again it's my thing I would suggest that we spend at least an hour because as we said earlier there are 
there are things that god wants to do in our spirit man which if we get up and go we lose it so if we can do for one hour nothing like it don't make it shorter than one hour is my personal suggestion yeah why answer will delay when we pray sometimes okay prem you have to go back to the previous video and listen to the whole video once again because you've answered that question quite elaborately okay so uh yeah you could do that because uh, i won't be able to answer that in one sentence is that fine okay good so even when we are working is it possible to like have a prayer time early morning then do all you know these days people want to do everything they want to exercise they want to cook they want to write they want to listen to a podcast everything and then go to work is it still possible if we pray yes one hour is possible it all depends on discipline if we can develop the discipline but having said that also there can be seasons in our lives where for example uh, if a family member is admitted in the hospital right and we are taking care of them we are not sleeping on the right time getting up as we used to so in those times if we are not able to keep the time don't worry too much about it you know once you're back get back into the usual schedule sometimes we are traveling right we are on the train we are in the flight we can't keep that time but when we are traveling don't worry about it when you're back get back to your normal schedule so that's how we have to keep getting back to the normal schedule and making it happen uh in prayer life prayer mm. time personal prayer time yeah like not personal but can we when we are praying basically mm. can we include one person with us i would say not really because then how does it become personal right it's between but, god and but us but it's like if someone is with us but they are doing their prayer we are doing our prayer but like ha huh. so if you're like, sitting in the same space that's okay that's hmm. understandable uh but not praying together hmm that's what i am hmm. or uh, or we started praying together but in the ending where we are praying by like, ourselves ah oh. that's fine that's fine yeah as long as you're getting some time alone with the lord so that so when we talk uh, about uh, the ministry when we talk about serving god in the course ministers foundation i think pastor selina will cover all this prayer is important what happens is even when it comes to ministry we may become so busy that we don't have time to pray we want to go preach the word we want to go minister miracles we don't have time to pray that is so dangerous very dangerous we must never allow ourselves to come into that position we rather spend time with god you know than do all these other things okay so that should be the mindset but of course what i'm trying to say is we need both that's when we are effective but if we don't have a strong prayer life and we are trying to do ministry sooner or later what we call as burnout burnout will happen why because we are pouring everything when we are doing ministry but are we getting filled only in prayer spending time with the lord reading the word we will get filled but if we are not getting filled how can we pour out at one point we'll exhaust everything that we have and that's very dangerous so uh, i like to look at it this way ministry uh, have you heard of um, 
the iceberg, uh, the Titanic, you know, it crashed onto an iceberg and it broke. So what the iceberg um, shows us is the base is very big. Okay. So the base is very, very big. From the outside, you might just see a spike on the water and you think, hey, that is the iceberg. I can face it. But under the water, there is such a big piece of ice that it can damage a ship. Okay? Our ministry should be, you know, we follow this iceberg principle, meaning whatever we do as ministry is what people can see on top. It's just a little bit. But underneath that ministry must be a very strong prayer life, a very strong life in the word, a very strong life in the spirit. If we have that, then God can do mighty things for a long time through us. But if that's not the case, if what people see is all that exists, very, uh, we're putting ourselves in a risky spot. Okay, so develop a strong life in the word of God, a strong life in the spirit, and a strong life in prayer. All right. So with that, I think I will stop unless, yeah, there's a question. Yes, please. So ma'am, what I do when I do in my personal prayer, mm -hmm. I pray, yeah. I open Bible, I read scripture, and I study that scripture, and then I close my prayer. So mm -hmm. is that the correct prayer, personal prayer time? Uh, so you or read... I can upgrade it. Uh, so you're, you're praying about what you read in the Bible? Is that how it is? Uh, like not like normally I pray and I ask God that God talk to me and like mm. talk to me through your word and I want to know certain answers and then I read scripture mm -hmm. and then I when I receive the revelation then I pray again and I close so that can be included in a personal yes. time yes so what you're doing is good at the moment but I wouldn't say upgrade I would say expand expand Add a few more elements, the way we saw today. You can spend some time praying in tongues, spend some time thanking God, different things like that. Expand it, make it uh, Expanded wider. Expanded in prayer, right? Yeah, in prayer. In prayer. Sure. All right, so let's close then. Um, and how about uh, somebody from the online batch? leads us in prayer, please unmute and lead us. Yes, Brother Success, please go ahead. Um, uh, good morning, man. Thank you so much. Morning. I want to ask if this budget, if they have a WhatsApp group, because I have not been having information. So if uh, they have WhatsApp group, they can add me on WhatsApp group. That's just okay. what I want. Sure, sure. So we do not have uh, WhatsApp groups success. Yeah, there is no WhatsApp group. You said what, ma'am? I said there is no WhatsApp group for the entire okay. class. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Okay, okay, ma'am. Please, is it advisable for us to have a WhatsApp group, ma'am? Um, yes. So we don't have a WhatsApp group, Elkana. What is your question? Sorry, I think I unmu unmuted you by mistake. So, so that if there's any information, we can relate to each other on yeah, WhatsApp so group. All the information will come to you through email or on the stream page of Google Classroom. If you want to leave us some information also, you can leave it on the stream page. So it's uh, everyone can see it and the teacher can also see it. There's also... Uh, an option to personally message the teacher. You can try doing that as well. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. If there's a message, if there's a channel for for students to get to the lecturer, I think that is very fine. That is very fine. Yeah. So there, there is the channel that I'm mentioning is there is a personal message option. Success. You can write to the teacher on Google Classroom. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Great, great. So let's let's go ahead. We will pray and uh, close. Can one of the online students please lead us? Okay. 
Yes, uh, brother Mavai, are you praying? We can't hear you. Yeah, we can pray. Let us pray. Yeah, let's pray, please. Yes, Lord, we, we are very, very grateful that we can dwell deeper into the area of prayer. We thank you for the sessions that we have had today, the morning one and even these last two ones. We thank you, Lord, for the way you have helped our teachers, our pastors to share the truth. Thank you, Lord, that you are also opening our hearts so that we receive your truth, dear Lord. We continue to pray, Lord, that we shall be grounded, we shall be rooted even deeper into your truth as we grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now as we come to the end of this lesson, we thank you and we look forward to a day well spent in your presence as you continue to walk with us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mavai. And um, thank you, Ma yeah, all the best, everyone. Let's develop our prayer life and let it uh, keep growing. Thank you and bye for now.